everybody, it's Steph Mischuk with StudioWeb.com and other sites. Um, yeah, yeah, with Killer Sites and Killer PHP. But I've recently, we've, uh, well, a little while ago, we've launched a Studio Web thing, so we can't use the word killer because the schools don't like that. And I don't blame the schools, trust me, I don't. But um, anyhow, so in this video, if you're a nerd learning web programming and web design, you probably don't want to watch it. It's going to bore you. But if you're a teacher who is teaching web design and web programming, these three tips might be useful to you. I've been teaching web design programming since 2002, 2003, something like that. No, 2002. Uh, through my articles and my online videos. My videos are all seen around the world, blah, 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 for, for over a decade now. So it's been a while. And I've gotten feedback from thousands and thousands of students and over the years. So I can give you three big tips that will help you to teach web design and web programming effectively. Tip number one, I'm just going to refer to my list here. Uh, keep theory to a minimum. You don't want to drone on and talk for 20 minutes, half an hour about some nerd theory. Most students are just going to fall asleep within five, ten minutes, depending on the age, of course. The older, the more dedicated they are, uh, the more likely they're going to pay attention for longer. But typically, you know, we live in a YouTube generation where the kids have shorter attention spans. To that point, even within the Studio Web system, which is being used by K-12 schools and some colleges as well, we are uh, going to be shrinking our videos in length. Some of them are six, seven, eight minutes, or even some that are 10 minutes. And what we're finding now with the, the, in the classrooms, especially in the high school and middle school, you want to keep the video lanes uh, shortened. So we're actually going to be shortening all our videos to under five minutes. Uh, yeah, the next thing you want to do, uh, tip number two, is uh, less theory, more practical examples. So it should be a little bit of theory, more practical. And especially when it comes to writing code, you really want to have students write code. You want them to actually type it in the keyboard or even do little exercises where they write it out on paper. I find personally when you write stuff on paper, it sticks in the brain better. Uh, but especially, you know, when it comes to code, you want them to write code. You want the code to be evaluated. Uh, you know, in the case with, say, you're doing JavaScript, you want the code to be evaluated by the browser engine so they can see their errors. Or if you're using Studio Web, the Studio Web engine will evaluate the code and they can see their errors and get interaction because that's how you really learn how to code is to actually start writing the code. Um, yeah, when it comes to teaching anything, I found over the years that the split should be maybe 20% theory, 80% practical. 20% theory, 80% practical. And that's the best way to do it, again, from my experience. And my final tip is, if you can, try to have the students build something somewhat interesting. Now, so people are doing that a bit. You see, they build games and stuff. That's cool. But I think smaller, simpler, but interesting things are cool. So for instance, when we teach our PHP class, well, we, me, when I teach my PHP class within Studio Web or people buy my videos outright, um, what I try to do is I try to get into real usable PHP right away. I don't go on forever about all the, the you know, the f five different ways or the 10 different ways you can, you can play with arrays, for instance, or, you know, or all the different aspects and variations functions. I teach them the bare minimum, and then we get into real things. So for instance, I teach them a function, what a function does, some of the built-in functions in PHP, and then immediately I show them how to send an email with PHP. So they do something real, right? So on. So those are my three tips to review. Keep the theory to a minimum, otherwise you're going to have people falling asleep. Use a lot of practical examples. My preference is 80-20 split, 20% theory, 80% practical. And get them to build things, small little things, as quickly as possible. Stuff that they use, see, stuff that they would use in the real world. And that's why with Studio Web, the courses, we're always trying to introduce, uh, follow these rules and to uh, get them to do real things that they do in real life. So for instance, with PHP, they learn how to process a form. They learn how to send an email. With JavaScript, they learn how to validate forms. They learn how to activate uh, uh, 
uh, the DOM and to have menus pop up and that kind of stuff. So there you have it. Those are my three tips. So if you're teaching people code, this is what you want to do.